Monkeys in control Clap your hands like this Now do the twist Stomp your feet the same Now sing this way I hope you are ready for a new adventure because today we're going to be launched into a fantastic new journey. Our new series is called Back to School. You might not want to think about that yet, right? But it is called Back to School, Backpacks, Blessings, and New Beginnings. And over the next four weeks, we're going to be exploring what it means to be returning to school armed with the most important supplies. Now you might think I'm talking about pencils and papers and notebooks and folders, and you will need those things, but not just those things. You're gonna need something far more valuable than those. You're gonna need some virtues like kindness, honesty, patience. So today's lesson is packed with purpose. We're gonna be gearing up for the journey ahead. But what does that mean? Well, we're about to find out together. But before we do, let's start with a fun game. Are you ready? Hi, boys and girls. How you doing today? Today we're getting ready to go back to school, aren't we? I ah, know. I can hear y'all cheering out there. Yeah. Woo! Whoop, whoop. Going back to school. It's the most wonderful time of the year for parents. <laughs> Anywho, so we got a uh, book back here, and I want you to tell me whether or not this you, this is something you would take to school or something that you wouldn't take to school. All right, let's look and see. All right, I'm going to open my book back here, and you out there in TV land, you let me know. Is it to, Can you take it to school or can you not take it to school? How about, hmm, hmm let me see, huh? How about pencils? Can we take those to school? You're right, we can. We can take those to school. And we should. Hopefully you take a whole bunch because you're going to be writing. <laughs> How about, let me see here. How about paper? Paper? Some of y'all decided? Yes, we're going to bring paper, aren't we? This kind of paper you put in a notebook. And you're gonna write down stuff, and you're gonna take notes from your uh, from your teacher. Sure. <laughs> How about a, a composition book? Huh? Or would you take that to school? Would you? Yes or no? Yeah, sure. Right, you would take that to school. All right. Now let me see here. Let me see. I thought I might take this to school. You tell me what you think. 
R2D2, can I take him to school? Huh? You don't think so? Yeah, you're probably right. I probably would get in trouble. I'd be playing with it. It, it really, it, it don't work right now, but you push button and the bubble gun comes out. Yeah, you probably don't take that to school. How about, uh, how about a ruler? Would you take a ruler to school? Yeah, you probably would take a ruler to school. I would. Uh, you never know when you're going to be measuring stuff. That'd be a good thing. How about one of these babies? Let me see here. Let me get it ready. How about one of these? Would I take it to school? Have you ever played with one of these? You're probably not as old as I am, but I played with them a lot. <laughs> would you take that to school? Do you think your teacher would mind if you get it out and play with it uh, during class? Yeah, she would mind. You shouldn't take this to school either. And how about last but least, what about this here? A lunchbox. Would you take a lunchbox to school? Yeah, of course you would. You want to take your lunch and you know, you might see that I have a little, uh, a little pattern going here. <laughs> but those are some things you would take to school. Well, let me ask you a few questions. Would you take, would you pack kindness in your, in your book bag? How about friendliness? How about respect? How about being nice to others? Those are some things that you may not pack in your book bag, but you should take to school with you, and you should also uh, share those with others because it takes a lot of kindness to make it through a day. <laughs> and you want people to be kind to you, so you be kind to them, and you be respectful to them because you want their respect too. All right, thank you, boys and girls, and thank you for letting me help me figure out why I'm going to take to school. I appreciate it. And I hope you have a great time at school. And I hope that you'll, you'll have fun and you'll learn a lot. And I hope you'll treat your bus driver very nicely. And All right, boys and girls. Do you remember our game, What's in the Backpack? We sorted out items that are commonly found in a school backpack and those that are not. Now, let's imagine that we could fill a backpack with things that aren't physical but are still very important not just for school, but for life. Let's call this our spiritual backpack. So as you can see inside, it is empty. Just like you wouldn't go to school without your textbooks or pencils, you also don't want to start your day without filling up, filling up the spiritual backpack. But what kind of things do you think we would put in here? Let's see. I have some pictures here, what we could pull out. See, we could put a, pull out a heart for love, to love one another. Stick it together. We can pull out a peace sign to make peace with other people. And of course, a smiley face, because who doesn't love to smile and be joyful? So now let's see what some other things that could go into the backpack that may not be very useful. Sometimes we may have a storm cloud that could represent anger or even a heart, a broken heart that represents hate and sadness. Do we want to put those in our spiritual backpack? No, we don't. Just like you wouldn't bring unnecessary items to school that could weigh you down or get in your way and take up the stuff in your spiritual backpack. In today's lesson, we are learning about how we are packed with purpose. Our scripture for today is from Colossians chapter 3, verses 12 through 14. And it talks about the virtues we should wear every day. Just like we need to equip our school backpacks with essential supplies, we need to fill our spiritual backpacks with these virtues such as kindness, compassion, and patience. By choosing to fill our spiritual backpack with these good things, we can navigate our days at school and everywhere else we go. 
because knowing we are equipped to show Jesus' love to everyone we meet. And let's remember, it doesn't matter what challenges we face. With our spiritual backpacks filled, we're ready to set the journey ahead. Imagine if we had to pack our backpacks with those things that are not physical. You can't touch them, but they're still very important. Things you're going to need for school. Things like kindness, patience, honesty. Those are the kind of supplies that we're going to be talking about in our lesson, Packed with Purpose. So let's dig in. Today, we're going to look at a story from the Bible about a young man named Joseph. Now, the first thing I'm going to tell you about Joseph, this might shock you. He had 11 brothers. How does that sound to you? Sounds kind of rough to me. But here's the thing you ought to know about Joseph as well. He, out of all the children, Joseph was his father's favorite. Now, imagine how you would feel if you were one of the other brothers. How would that make you feel that you're not the father's favorite, you're Joseph was? Might make you a little bit jealous, right? Maybe even a little bit angry. So let's see what happens to Joseph. So this is Joseph. Hey! You see, Joseph was the son of Israel and Rachel. Israel loved Joseph more than all 12 of his sons. In fact, he made Joseph a coat to show him how much he loved it. <laughs> when Joseph's brothers saw this, they hated Joseph. <laughs> One night, Joseph had a dream. When he awoke, Joseph told the dream to his brothers. He said, listen to this dream I had. We were gathering grain when suddenly my bundle of grain rose up and all of you bowed to me. This made his brothers hate Joseph even more. And they said, you're going to rule over us? Then Joseph had another dream. And he told it to his brothers and his father. He said, listen, I had another dream. And this time, the sun and moon and 11 stars were bowing down to me. This time, Israel heard the dream and rebuked Joseph, saying, Will your mother and brothers and I actually come and bow down before you? The brothers were even more angry when they heard the second dream. Israel, however, decided to think about what Joseph was saying. One day, Joseph's brothers were working when they saw Joseph coming to meet them. One of his brothers mocked him and said, here comes the dreamer. Come on now, let's kill him and throw him away to be devoured by a ferocious animal. Then we'll see what comes of his dreams. One of the brothers named Reuben wanted to rescue Joseph, so he said, let us not take his life. Instead, throw him in the pit. Yeah. So when Joseph came to his brothers, hey. they attacked him. Yeah. They took the robe their father had given Joseph. They hoisted Joseph up and threw him into the well. Uh. Then they saw a group of men from Midian coming towards them. Judah thought it would be a good idea to sell Joseph to these men. So the brothers sold Joseph to the merchants for 20 shekels. The brothers then took the coat of many colors back to their father and made him believe that Joseph had been killed. Israel wept for his son, whom he loved. Meanwhile, Joseph was taken as a slave to Egypt to work in the house of a man named Potiphar, for Joseph's story was only just beginning. Can you even begin to imagine how scared Joseph felt, how he must have felt? when he was in that pit, when he was sold as a slave. But you know, even in those situations, he had something special packed in his spiritual backpack. Can you guess what some of those things in his backpack might have been? Things like courage, faith, trust in God. He had those things in his backpack. Even when he was afraid, he knew that God was with him. 
You know, those awful things that happened, they were never part of Joseph's plan, but they were part of God's plan. And God ultimately had a reason for everything that he did. And Joseph trusted in God for that. He had packed his spiritual backpack, so to speak, with faith that would help to carry him through the many difficult days ahead. His life wasn't easy. Things were hard, but he was not alone. He had faith in God. So let's remember to pack our spiritual backpacks as we're getting ready back to go back to school, just like Joseph did. And let's trust in God no matter what happens. Let's pray. Dear God, we thank you so much for the things that you show us in your word. We thank you for Joseph and how we can see that along in his life, he had packed some things to carry with him wherever he went. Faith in you, courage, trust, and we pray that you would help us as we get ready to go back to school, to bring things to school besides just the physical supplies that we're going to need, but help us to bring you along with us. Help us to bring trust, courage, faith, that no matter what happens, it's all part of your plan. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. I can do all things through him who gives me strength. Philippians 4, chapter 4, verses 13. This is our memory verse for uh, today. This verse reminds us that no matter what we face, we can do all things because God gives us strength. So let's remember to pack our spiritual backpacks with faith and courage, courage just like Joseph did. There's a whole lot of change coming your way Cause like it or not, nothing stays the same So hold on tight and follow around